Hello, everybody. Um, let me know if you can hear me. Hi, Cherry. Well, um, um, there is a high possibility to keep you up to date with my surgery and the results and all that. Uh, there is a high probability, unfortunately, that I'll have to go back in and replace the lens because apparently it's not the correct strength. But the doctor said that, um, hi Ellen, hi Heidi, that uh, we need to give it more time, that even if she would do anything to have to go back in, it wouldn't be before a month. But she wants to give it at least two more weeks for, you know, the eye needs to heal and the lens needs to settle. Hi, Zenda. Hi, Mary. So, uh, I can see. Let me check and try and get the microphone higher. there we go so now you should be able to hear me really high <laughs> uh, so yeah to say that again um, there is a high probability that I'll have to go back to replace the lens they have inserted because it might not be the proper strength hi Judy hi Elaine but uh, it will be a wait because the doctor prefers to wait for a little bit for the eye to heal before she has to do another incision and for the lens to settle. Um, she said not to go by the first eye because the first eye was really <laughs> not normal in how fast it healed. But uh, hi Karen, hi Natalia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, because of the fact that it's highly, uh, because of the fact that it's healing much, not so fast as the first one did, uh, I had to skip on uh, doing lives. I uh, did work a little bit today on clay, and I'm planning on doing some more this afternoon, but... Um, the problem is that if I focus my uh, eyesight on something for more than like five minutes at a time, I need to take a break because it starts hurting. So, uh, yeah, it, and if I would do a live with a tutorial live, I would have to have my eyes focused on something. So, uh, I just didn't want to, you know, maybe start a live and have to stop it and I didn't want to n not give you the life you're used to hi Joan and um, the thing is that again I had quite a bit of um, questions that I meant to go through but the thing you know that I do have the first Saturday of the month in the morning I do have the monthly chat with you Maybe I should start scheduling another uh, live with questions and answers because I do not want to do, you know, you know that normally I don't want to keep you longer than an hour uh, because the, the attention starts wandering and it's useless to waste your time and mine. <laughs> um, and that's why normally I would answer questions in the monthly chat, but uh, I don't want to make it too long. So I don't know, maybe I will uh, do an extra, maybe not once a month, you know, but when I get a whole bunch of questions, I will announce a question and answer. Um, so yeah, the surgery itself was fine. Uh, the funny part was that this time I didn't fall asleep and <laughs> the surgeon said that probably they forgot to take into consideration the fact that I'm on pain medication because I saw and heard everything. <laughs> it wasn't painful. It was a little bit unpleasant when they started and I asked her, it was funny because the first time when they just got in and she said that those were probably the threads from the cataracts because like, oh my God, I have worms in my eye. 
<laughs> and she started laughing. She was like, don't make me laugh because my hand moves. Uh, <laughs> but hi, Chris. Hi, Julie. Hi, Colleen. But yeah, the surgery itself went just fine. And uh, you saw, I was a little bit groggy <laughs> when I posted the, that minute of that I posted on Facebook to tell you that I'm okay. I'm out of surgery and I'm okay. But, and the, the eye looks like it's healing normally. The problem is that I cannot see well with it. So it's kind of a wrong lens strength pretty much so as I said you might have to go in and change it but that will not happen before two weeks and will probably happen in a month or so because the main uh, the other major problem is that it gives me headaches and that's not pleasant <laughs> but well Leah you know when I was 19 I had uh, on this eye and if you notice I have a little spot on the white of the eye I actually had uh, the sclera is all the white that it's a mem the white membrane that surrounds the eyeball. I had a new one put in because to stop the myopia from growing because otherwise I would have been blind by the age of 26. So, and that one I went through with, I mean, think about it. We are talking about 1980 and uh, uh, that one I went through with just local and the local consisted to a series of shots here between the eyeball and the bone Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I don't know Donna. I don't know yet. So we'll have to wait and see. Hi, Anna uh, so uh, This is what it is and I should be able to start working on uh, on stuff more consistently really soon I said today I'm gonna still give it a little bit you know because uh, hey it's the third day after the surgery after all um, but uh, let's get on with the questions and if you have any questions uh, just ask them in the chat and I'll get to them I'm, I'm actually opening a little notepad here so I don't uh, miss anything and uh, in the meantime, I'm going, hi Cindy, I'm going to um, answer questions. I kind of tried to group them by what they are referring to, but uh, they might be a little bit, you know, <laughs> uh, randomly shuffled. So, um, the first question, the first uh, questions will be about um, a conditioning clay. And uh, I started working on uh, that series that I've been threatening you with, with all kinds of uh, polymer clay for beginner um, videos and one of them is the clay conditioning remember I did the one with uh, what clay to pick but I'll revisit that subject especially now with even more clays coming up uh, on the market and the thing is one is question is um, do we always need to condition the clay yes we always need to condition the clay even if the clay looks all nice and soft right out of the package uh, because uh, you have, and I will try and make some drawings and designs in the tutorial, but essentially uh, what you have to think, and I'm going to just try and put it in layman, layman ter terms, uh, what you have in the clay is the PVC particles and the plasticizer particles. And uh, you need to have the plasticizer particles uh, evenly distributed between the PVC particles. Otherwise, in the areas where you have too many PVC particles or too many plasticizer par particles together, uh, in that area the clay uh, will be um, fragile, it would easily break and all that. 
and uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that because the polymer clay is a polymer obviously it, uh, it's part of certain types of substances that uh, become viscous when they are subject to any kind of pressure force it's a little bit kind of like you know with the ketchup how you shake the bottle to make it uh, get out of the bottle that is because the ketchup is kind of like that too you know uh, when it gets moved it becomes viscous and it's the same thing with the polymer clay when it's regularly there it's a block but then when you start putting it through the pasta machine or kneading it or whatever it becomes viscous enough to be able to be modeled and that's the whole deal about it and no it's not about um, you know sitting still on a shelf and all the stuff falling to the bottom it's not a suspension liquid it's just about the fact that they do move because you'll ask me how do they move then well um because they have you know all these particles all the particles in general they have uh, different electric charges and because on one end they are plus and on one end, end they are minus they tend to agglomerate together you know like little magnets and that's why you need to move them around to make them even uh so in short yes you always have to condition the clay the other thing uh, the other question was um can you use other let me see how it was formulated what else can you use besides the clay softeners i saw videos that recommend to use uh, baby oil and uh, vaseline um how can I put it? Yes, if you use baby oil, if you use Vaseline, if you use whatever else than clay softener, yes, you'll get your clay soft. But it will not have the same properties. Uh, so a clay that was softened using baby oil, let's say, um, because they have different electric charges, they get mixed together differently. Uh, not only it will change the texture but it will change the quality of your finished product so um, if you cannot afford to buy the um, uh, more expensive so to speak Fimo softener for Fimo or Cernit softener for Cernit yes I already ordered it I already ordered it Zenta um, even if you you cannot afford you can still use the cheap uh, scalpy clay softener it works fine with fimo and it works fine with cernit uh it wor works fine with kato i would not use it on primo remember uh, well, on pardo sorry uh remember pardo the only thing is about um mm, warming up the wax that's in the pardo yeah now about that uh, monster clay uh you have to be aware of a few things um number one at this point by what i could see they only make it in uh, flesh color uh, number two it will have to be we'll have to test and see exactly what type of pigments can go on it uh, if it needs to be colored before baking if it needs to color after baking and also in in this you have to think about something else about the fact that whatever you use for coloring uh, if it if it can be colored using bits of other clays without losing the flexible properties but if you color it by applying color on it before or after it's baked you have to think about the fact that the whatever color you apply has to be a flexible color because if you're going to use regular acrylic um 
regular acrylic once it dries out is not really flexible so if you start flexing that clay you're gonna get cracks in the paint uh, using different liquids in what Karen uh, but yeah what well, what I saw about the and be very careful because don't say cosplay clay because there are several cosplay clays that are not like the monster clay okay um, most of them are also most of them are air dry and you work completely different with an air dry clay than you work with a baking clay because with the air dry clay you have only so much time to work it <laughs> before it gets too stiff um, don't get me wrong I like uh, air dry clay I did work with air dry clay I still have some epoxy uh, clay around here and I use uh, the epoxy clay mostly on when I try to make um, stuff surrounding resin you know the regular resin regular casting resin because the regular casting resin if you try to bake it it yellows out the UV resin the Chinese UV resin doesn't so you can use the regular uh, polymer clay but um, I cannot say more about the master clay until I get it I saw the videos like all of you did but uh, until I get it and I try it and I <laughs> do the test with it I cannot tell much um, I hope it's got some transparency because uh, if it would be an absolutely fabulous thing to make um, bracelets you know and uh, to use it for what for conditioning clay yes it is a pol the liquid clay is a um, it's actually a plastisol that's how it's called so obviously you can use it to soften um, regular solid clay Are you talking about the tutorial that uh, polymer clay artist put up? Uh, because on that one it didn't say cosplay on the packet it said cos clay. And it's cosclay.com. And uh even polymer clay artist said that he needs to test it on doing things so it's called monster clay and the the packet showed monster clay they are two different things and i'll show you cosplay clay usually is air dry And it's most of the time it is a foam clay. And a lot of times you can use also paper clay. But there's no clay that's actually called cosplay clay. Hold on, I need to do the shortening of the... link okay so this is a cosplay clay And this is monster clay. Cost clay is the name of the website. Not the name of the product itself mm, 
but uh, once again if you look at it it's not really it only has one color for now now uh, polymer clay artist uh, reply to me that they are actually oh and it's not a bakeable And I have no idea what they are talking about. Okay. So, I don't know. When I get it, when I... I'll tell you more. Until then, I cannot tell you more. So, I might have gotten my info wrong, too. So I don't know. Uh, and I, an another thing is that I don't want to to engage myself in uh, more than I can do. I still have a whole bunch of stuff to do when I get to the to finishing everything that I have I I have in plan to do. Then I'll get there. I don't want to start getting too much on my plate and then start freaking out that I cannot finish anything and and all that. I am trying to get methodical here, you know. If you feel like you want to test it, then feel free to subscribe to Cosplay and tell them what a good sculpture you are, see if they accept you in, your pro in their program and go ahead and test it. Hi, Christina. Hi, Bennett. So, uh, to get back to the questions. Um, next was, when uh, should I varnish and what varnish do you prefer? <laughs> and this is a, a very frustrating answer that I give everybody who asks me that um, and that is uh, depends because uh, me personally unless I have any kind of surface treatment um, mica powder um, paint you name it unless I have that, that requires sealing, I always prefer to sand and buff because I think that uh, it looks much better and more professional and more finished. The other problem is that uh, depending on what area of the world you live in, some varnishes have the tendency to go a little soft and goopy in high humidity. And not a lot of people know that. Um, and that includes some liquid polymer clay. If you live in a high humidity area and you have something that was glazed with liquid, translucent liquid polymer clay, and it doesn't matter the brand. I mean, including the Kato uh, polyclay will do that. Uh, from time to time, you will have to um, get your heat gun and reheat it to, because otherwise it will get a little bit milky. What is working and not working, Francis? Hello, by the way. Um, so, uh, why I say it depends? Because, again, on the question, what do, do I prefer? Um, honestly, when I have to varnish something, uh, there are a few things that I would use more often. Uh, and that would be the um, homemade shellac. And remember, I have a tutorial showing you how to make your own. Um, and then simply the um, um, 
either the water-based Minwax or the water-based Varathane. I do have all kinds of glazes and varnishes, you name it. Um, the other thing uh, is, yes, as Karen, as long as it is water-based, if you get the other kind that's not water-based, it's going to eat up your clay. Because what you have to think is that the polymer clay is plastic. If you put anything that is thinner or acetone based on plastic, it's going to eat the plastic up. Um, so as I was saying, the other thing that uh, I have to consider when I varnish something is if that piece has to go back in the oven or not because um, some varnishes can be baked, but some cannot. Uh, for example, um, diamond, Judikin's diamond glaze cannot be baked. Um, there are a few others that cannot uh, be baked. Uh, so most of the time if I have something that needs to be baked, I would use the good old Sculpey glaze. As much as I don't like it much, I will still use it if I need to protect something, but most of the time I would use the um, the satin finish, not the glossy one, because it's very sculpy glaze is very inconsistent when it comes to the um, um, glossiness. Um, again, it depends if I'm using the varnish for any kind of uh, effect. Um, it depends on what effect I'm trying to achieve. For example, if I will use High Rabi, if I would use um, the varnish to obtain a faux enamel look, um, in enamel, as you put the enamel between the metal parts, the edges will have that tensile thing and will go a little bit as uh, the enamel dries it kind of goes down but you still have the edges like that and the only one that does that is the judikins uh, diamond glaze uh, i said earlier zenta only the of uh, the the casting resin cannot be baked i mean you can bake it but it's gonna get very yellowish and of the UV resin, the one that I know for a fact that will not get yellowish or anything is the uh, the Chinese UV resin and also tiny Pandora's uh, um, deep shine <coughs> can be baked. It doesn't yellow out, but any other one will yellow out. So I wouldn't put it in the oven. Um, so again depending on a lot on what i need to do with that varnish um if i would have to apply some sealant let's say if i would do something with flowers and i applied pigment powder on it um one thing that i always try to avoid is to allow my pieces look plasticky you know, look like Chineseries. Um, so if I would do something with flowers, for example, and to get more realism on the flower, I would put a little bit of pigment here and there. Then I will use the PYM2. Um, I did not try yet. Uh, there is another um, spray that I did not try. What the heck, I got all signed out from my Amazon and everything. Um, and it is called, just a second. I heard a lot of artists talking about it, but I did not get around to try it yet. Um, oh, come on the Kote crystal coat k-o-t-e i don't know how you pronounce it what i did try though it would be because you can find all of these in the in my influencer store here 
No, they stopped a while ago and then they started doing it again. Okay, it still doesn't let me. All right. So here you can see all kinds of glazes and uh, varnishes uh, here. And um, the a UV sealant uh, that's the the gallery uh, series for normally it's used for sealing paintings but you can easily use it on uh, polymer clay because uh, it will not uh, harm the clay in any way so uh, I don't know did they stop again making it <coughs> You can find the Chinese resin in my Amazon store. You can find all kinds of other resins. Here's the one with resin and other yeah when it gets the diamond glaze i would use it only on a small one what i used it plenty before was on uh, i have a special method of making um fairy wings and i used it a lot on making fairy wings with the uh, very thin wire for the little veins just because it does the perfect um, effect uh, thank you Andrea um, so in short what type of varnish and all of these I will try and expand them in further tutorials for beginners what type of varnish uh, and sealant and glazes do I use I'm sorry I cannot really give you a, I use this or I, cause, cause it depends what I use it for <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Um, and generally speaking, when I make a tutorial that involves varnishing or glazing, I will um, show you and I will tell you what type of varnish to use it. Melanie, where did you get it and uh, no, when did you get it? And when it wa was it shipped to you? Robbie, the one I use is the Chinese one. It's in the store. Uh, it's the second choice, the one that says $12 and it's got like fern, green fern leaves and some uh, yellow leaves on it and it's also the very last I think because I usually put two or three suppliers because their prices go up and down so there are several Chinese ones I didn't try the other ones I intend one day to get to try them but I didn't try them yet and so okay Cindy, it starts uh, thickening. Whenever you use with you use UV resin, you have to make sure that you cover your windows, and you only have non-UV lighting in your room, because it's a resin that cures from ultraviolet rays. So if you're in a room with big windows and it's a bright, shiny, shiny day, sunny day outside. You're going to have UV rays coming into your room and it's going <laughs> to start thickening as you're working with it. So make sure that you have for when you're using re UV resin, make sure that you have n a non UV light source, an incandescent uh, light bulb. So no, it has nothing to do with warmth, Cherry. It all it has all to do with UV light. Uh, what light lasts two weeks? Uh, 
Oh, you're talking about the, you got it from Amazon. Okay, why I asked is when, because up to date, the only, the only, and I'm not exaggerating, I ordered clay online from lots of places. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't try oil based. I don't know. I don't know what kind of oil is that and I wouldn't try it. Um, the only supplier that I know of who uses thermal protection for the clay when she ships it is Trish from Polyclay Play. All the other polymer clay suppliers I bought from, they do not use thermal insulation shipping. And I'll bring one to show you. So everything that you will buy from Trish will come, the clay will come in these. And these are thermal insulation uh, bags. I always keep them for when I'm shipping out <laughs> canes. Uh, but, and why I'm talking about that? Because uh, if it's summer, the clay will get baked, half-baked on the way to you. So uh, that's why I asked you where did you get it and when did you get it? And a lot of times um, it would be uh, also even the one that you buy from the store because you don't know how it was shipped to the store. So you always say, but how you know if it was half-baked or night or not, the half-baked one will be gritty. Yes, Trish is phenomenal. Um, how I do, what I do when I have clay like that, that's very hard and very old clay. Uh, I do two things. Uh, one is I have a small um, a salsa chopper. And I usually have to buy a new one every six months or so because they are cheap plastic and it gets eaten up by the polymer clay. But get a big uh, grater and grate some in and then you put some uh, clay softener in it and then you pulse it several times and that's going to make it possible to start conditioning it. Uh, the other thing that's... Uh, now I've been using mostly that is um, the never need the never need does wonders when it's about very old and dry clay yeah see I don't I don't order from Australia I only order from the US Julie but if you can uh, tell which is the store I'm sure that the people from Australia will be happy to know okay let me go back yeah it was probably half-baked Melanie unfortunately okay so what what are you talking about uh, not curing who said something about resin not curing uh, if you're talking about UV resin not curing Hi, Sonia. Um, if you put anything in it, you have to make sure that it is UV resin compatible. Because even if it might not sound like it, and you're trying to do something that some artist made a tutorial of, um, and that was either casting resin, you can put in casting resin or any kind of alcohol ink or color or whatever. Uh, but in UV resin, you need to use pigments that are special for UV resin that will allow 
the UV rays to go through because that's the other thing when you're putting all kinds of inclusions in UV resin you have to think this resin cures due to the light and if the light cannot go through because you have an inclusion there what's under that inclusion will not be cured you can kind of go through it if you have a good you can kind of put it on the other side but it depends on the inclusion but it's the same when you're talking about the coloring that you're using i did order some um, uv resin i have one more to order it's still in my wish list on amazon uh, to try and test they are supposed to be uv resin safe some pigments and uh, as well some colored uv resin so i'm i'm still i told you i have a whole bunch of stuff that was either i already had it and was planned for text testing in the second part of march or i had ordered and it just kept coming but as you know since march since i got those spine shots and it started the cataracts i couldn't yes uv resin some uv resins do have a shelf life um and you sure it was uv not some other kind but yeah robbie not all uv resins not all uv resins okay so let me see So yeah, I did not have that problem with the Chinese UV resin not curing, but um, probably I'm using it before it gets <laughs> past its shelf life. I hope that if you got it from Amazon, you go and put in a bad review to that seller because I'm very bad about that. Um, yeah, see, that's why I don't do wish. I don't do wish and when it's stuff that can be time sensitive I don't even AliExpress but yeah I got some stuff from AliExpress I think uh, if you uh, check my uh, my Facebook um, a lot of times I would order some things from AliExpress or from uh, other places and I would test them and if they were okay then I um, tell Trish and then she starts hide on uh, and she starts looking for a good price supplier so she can sell it cheap enough and still make a little bit of, you know, but be able to bring you an affordable price. And um, lately the things that we got, uh, that she got from my testing were the uh, golden necklace, like I used the one for uh, the, my latest tutorial posted, the one with the Cernit Metallic. Now be very careful because those are kind of stiff, so you need to work a little bit to put them in. And then there was a feather mold that was really good and also a fern mold they are just beautiful those ferns and then um a braided uh, leather cord that i found absolutely fabulous and i already have some pieces um in the project just a second let me try and grab it if it's not too low okay because remember, I cannot, uh, for a week after the surgery, I cannot bend lower than shoulder level and I cannot uh, lift. So if something falls, I have a ton of st stuff around the house that's on the ground. And uh, you have to think that I have a torn meniscus on my left knee. So crouching is not very <laughs> pleasant. But yeah, this is the the leather cord that i found absolutely fabulous see how nice and thick it is so she was able to bring both colors so you can get it at polyclay play 
and we'll do I'll show you how to attach what kind of end caps and I've added some end caps in the jewelry findings section in the oops Amazon store and I'll show you how to do with regular and how to actually make your own end caps with polymer clay well I'm sorry you're sick but I'm glad that you managed to catch it alive yeah see on some stuff with the I I prefer not the only time I buy from AliExpress is when I want to trust to test something because a lot of times it's not worth the wait you know I am really thrilled when Trish manages to get something because then um, and you've seen that she always has if you see any high price on Trish's website that means that she wasn't able to find it cheaper because she has a very little very small overhead she doesn't make much uh, yeah there are some vein leaves and all kinds of stuff and as I got the as I said I got the cernit before this last surgery so I'm going to start working on uh, but I saw that the first thing that I'm going to do because um, I think it should be easy enough for my eye to do remember I said that I'm going to start remaking some of the subjects of my first uh, video that I have yes it's every Sunday uh, that I uh, posted when I started the channel first just because at the time I started the channel I had an old web camera I didn't have good lighting I didn't have uh, a good uh, microphone or anything Trish is the owner of polyclayplay.com and she's a wonderful lady it's a one woman business um so as i said i'm going to redo some of the subjects of my first uh videos that the videos that i made before i got uh better equipment generally and i thought of making uh, one or two rose canes because there's the rose cane that i did before you know and uh, then there's another rose cane that's a little bit more advanced and uh, I might do both of them in one tutorial I'll just have to see how long it is because you know I don't like to make tutorials that are too long um, yeah see I ordered the UV pigments I ordered are from Amazon so sometimes I would even order stuff from Amazon and then I tell Trish hey this is good see if you can find it and if she can find it she will uh, bring it and unfortunately she's still waiting for <laughs> the female leather but um, yeah I got I do have sari ribbon so that's for another project I have a lot of stuff so I have let me see one two I have five projects involving resin um, then kind of like a mix between that I have some projects involving paint effects including Pebeo because it's a shame you know I've had the Pebeo paints all kinds of I mean you can see uh, all that the cart that's the closest to me it's all full of paints that are not regular acrylic paints because if you've seen previous videos of mine I have a whole tub full of acrylic paints as I used to be a painter but those are all kinds of paints and uh, alcohol inks and acrylic inks and all kinds of stuff so I've had the Pebeo and yes it's Pebeo not PBO because it's a French and it's got an accent on each A. I've had the Pebeo paints, the prism, the moon, uh, the vitrai, the ceramic, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, the, the store is... 
All done. This is my Amazon influencer store and you'll see I have a lot of boards and I'm trying to keep I'm spending probably around three hours every week trying to keep it updated. Um, yes, absolutely, Bennett. And uh, as you're, you'll be watching my videos, you'll see that I actually sometimes make my own pearlescent and metallic clays. I would suggest that you look for um, a video, just search in YouTube, that's called Metal Shift. Not Mica Shift, Metal Shift. It's the one where I made metallic clay using translucent clay and metal powdered alumilite. The thing that you need to remember though is that all pearlescent and all metallic clays are mica powder in translucent because if you don't have translucent clay you cannot obtain the mica shift effect you cannot see it and i do hide i did explain that uh let me actually because that's another one that i need to redo the mica shift and i did do a little drawing and all that um My gosh, shift technique. Uh, I do a drawing to explain how the mica shift effect appears and what you need. Okay, so this would be the, and the, as I said, I'm going to remake this one. But uh, also, if you go on my channel, Hold on, let me go on my channel. And again, I'm going to tell you, all of you, that in order to make things easier to find, because at this point I have, gosh, over 600 official YouTube videos. There's a lot of them that are unlisted because they were sponsor lives. But I did uh, order, I'm trying to order all my videos in playlists. And if to make it easier for you to find things. And if you go and look, uh, you'll find the Mica Shift as technique in two playlists. One of them will be the... I forgot if it's in the intermediate or uh, yeah it's in the intermediate polymer clay techniques but then you also have mica shift effect um, is it? there's a mica shift effect um, projects playlist so you can find that in both of them mica shift polymer clay jewelry so whenever you're looking for something try first to go in the um, uh, playlists because it will make depending on what you're looking for it will make things much easier for you to find um, once i get past all this and i get back to thank you Anna I get back on track uh, I intend to revamp a little bit the website as well because I didn't manage to update in a while and uh, if you never visited my website I suggest that you do because even if it's not fully updated uh, it they are more um, organized than on YouTube so it's much easier to find things actually and this would be the link to my website and you can find it in the about me in the channel but if you go on my website you'll see how they are organized um, 
into free tutorials for beginners, basic techniques, basic canes, simple do-it-yourself project, advanced, masterclass for effect, gemstone imitation. So it's a little bit easier to, uh, to find them. And also there's a special section for Pardo. Uh, Cindy, some of the stuff you should be able to get on Canada and I need to go in because they came up with the one link on Amazon uh, after my eyes started messing up on me. But I need to go in and create the one link so that people from all over the world can use their local Amazon and still get... Uh, the things from my uh, influencer store and talking about that i am so upset with the amazon influencer program because at one point um somebody asked me what i would recommend as a laptop and i went ahead and i uh, looked and i said okay i'm gonna put it in what to use for video because it was for not just gaming and stuff. I'm gonna just put it in my influencer store under the what to use for making videos. And it was a relatively expensive laptop. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get a good uh, commission from it. Um, and I keep looking and I keep looking and it keeps coming down as zero, you know. And I knew that it was shipped because normally they show as zero until they get shipped. You don't get your earnings until they get shipped. And uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, as I said, it's a few cents from here, a few cents from there. Some categories only give like 2%. Other categories can give like 4% or uh, it's not a lot. It's not like it's a ton of um stuff that gets a lot more commission and uh, think about it if it's two percent on a four dollars <laughs> item i think it's just uh, eight cents but it adds up and it helps me a lot with buying more stuff for uh tutorials and to experiment on things anyway so it was it kept coming as zero and I, I called and i said hey you know i know that it's been shipped why didn't i get my earnings and they are like, oh no, because we do disqualify some purchases. If somebody buys too much repeatedly from your store, because we are more interested in new customers. And I'm like, dude, are you freaking kidding me? So those people wouldn't have bought those items if I wouldn't have gone and worked to try them, to uh, test them, and to tell people, yes, they are okay, you can buy them. They wouldn't have bought those items. So you're more interested to sell or just to get a customer, a new customer that might or might not buy anymore. So yeah, um, I am a little bit disappointed. Don't Don't get me wrong, I'm still getting... Uh, some earnings only that it's not as awesome as it was touted to be I because I went and I looked um, back several months and I only get uh, earnings for about half of well I don't know I don't do patreon Karen so I don't know how you do that I wouldn't be able to help you. Um, I think that Patreon only does it once a month. And I don't know. I think it's the first or something like that. Um, okay. What was next? Let me see. Oh, yeah. The next is about modes. Uh, somebody said, and I've said that before, but it's always new people coming, so I'm going to talk about it again. Yeah, I know, and I know, that's why I'm, I was so upset. Um, there are different types of modes. Because somebody got some modes and they were like, oh, I cannot even use them because I don't get a good uh, impression. And I'll show you what the biggest differences are.
just grab them real quick. It doesn't mean that you cannot use them at all, only that they are much harder to use. Okay, here are several, and I'm going to switch to the Okay, let me get this out of the way so I can show you what I'm talking about. Generally speaking, if you see in the description of that mold, it says uh, for fondant or for sugar craft, most likely it will be too soft to use. Um, for example, at one point I got this from Etsy and uh, the seller had separately for polymer clay and from, uh, f for fondant. And I especially got the, yeah, you can find those in the organizer section in the Amazon store, Nunia. Uh, the seller had put two separate kinds. They were the same, only they were for polymer clay and for sugar craft. And of course I bought the polymer clay and surprise, surprise, it's for sugar craft because this is what happens with the sugar craft ones. Oops. They are soft because fondant is way softer than, um, okay. I have no idea what this I don't know what's be done. Let me see. Let me check. What does that mean? Oh. I don't. There you go, Yuri. Okay, hi, Lydia. So, uh, when they are polymer clay specific molds, they will be firm, like this one, and the um, uh, best flexible molds. You know, they are for polymer clay. They are not for uh, I mean, of course you can use fondant in all of them, but the thing is that you can use fondant in polymer clay molds, but it's not a good idea to use polymer clay in fondant molds. And why is that? Essentially because they are so soft that when you press the polymer clay in, uh, it's going to flatten the small details so it will not be a good proper detailed imprint that you'll get it's a completely different thing if you have a fondant let's say a fondant butterfly mold and if you have a polymer clay butterfly mold all the little see this is a fondant and most of the time, whenever you see pink, that will be a fondant, but not always. You can get polymer clay uh, pink too, but it's uh, like a little bit of, it's like 90%, 95% of the ones that are pink will be for fondant. So as a general idea, if you see fondant or sugar craft in the description, the chances are very high that it will not work with polymer clay because they will be 
too soft and uh, the details will be squished in and you will not get a good imprint of them. Um, resin mold, it depends on the... You can use the sugar craft for resin. Absolutely, that's not a problem. You can always use the sugar craft molds for resin. If you can use the resin molds for polymer clay, uh, here it depends if the resin mold that you have is plastic or if it is silicone. And that is for us a, a simple reason because if it is plastic, it's much harder to get the polymer clay out of the mold and in the process you'll kind of distort the the shape but if you have a let me show you what I'm talking about because I have some examples So the resin molds you can use for um, polymer clay, that will not be a problem. I mean, they will not mess up the polymer clay. They are sturdy enough to be good. The pro your problem will be that you'll have trouble getting the polymer clay out of it because it's not flexible enough. Some of the resin silicone molds, like see these pretty ones that I got from Tiny Pandora, um, these are fabulous both because some of the silicone molds for resin are also bakeable so you can use them for no, they must be made out of, there's a silicone rubberish thing. It's not pure silicone. Um, some of the silicone molds for resin are bakeable. So they are also usable for uh, liquid clay, like these ones that Tiny Pandora has. But... Um, you might have issues using them for regular clay because they might be, again, they might be too soft. There are some silicone molds for resin that would be the proper stiffness uh, slash flexibility that you can use it for both. But these ones, the plasticky ones, the stiff ones, you can use them for resin. You cannot use them for liquid clay because obviously they are not bakeable you have to make sure that they are bakeable otherwise they'll just melt but uh, they might not be very good to use on polymer clay because it's very hard to remove the polymer clay from it the molds like the makings and those they those will work because they are uh, soft enough but uh, these ones the sculpy ones can easily be used for liquid clay because they are bakeable this one I think I got from Trish it's a tribal faces that's really cool the ones for chocolate are good for polymer clay because they are stiff enough but not all of them are bakeable again but uh, the ones for chocolate, they are good for making molds of polymer clay because they are stiff enough to get the details unsquished, but they are flexible enough to be able to, as long as you can do this to unmold the polymer clay, 
then you can use it for polymer clay. If it's too stiff and you cannot do that, then it's advisable not to use with polymer clay. But again, on the chocolate ones, you have to make sure that it says if it's bakeable or not. Uh, no, you cannot set the, the stiff resin molds are uh, temperature sensitive plastic. So you cannot use those. Yeah, the almond is really good. I love the almond cabochons. And yeah, I have uh, quite a bit of resin molds and other things and uh, they are good. Oh, and the same thing goes for, let me actually show you. Oh, let me grab my painters. The same thing goes for veiners. Uh, some veiners, the veiners that are... Um, just for I'll show you the difference between them just for sugar craft they will not leave a proper impression on the clay let me grab a piece of clay here and show you the difference So a sugar craft veiner, if I put it in and I'm going to fix the focus closer, give me just a minute. Okay, so if I use a veiner that's for sugar craft only, it's in the tools in the influencer store, Mary. I don't know. It depends on what you're talking about, Robbie. Some are, some aren't. But most of the Sculpey molds are bakeable. So I'm using the plain sugar craft mold and it will leave some veining but very faint so this is a rose petal vein it's super faint and it will not um, resist much to manipulation it will it will start fading as you keep manipulating the petal <laughs> now if i'm using a better quality and it's true the better quality ones are about two to three times the uh, uh, price of the plain sugar craft ones but they are worth it i mean if you don't have a large butter budget instead of getting 10 cheaper ones better go for a good quality one once a month until you get yourself a stash so if i'm using the good quality one uh you put little pieces of felt around there I'll show you where give me just a minute to finish with the veiners and I'll show you where you put the felt okay so see how much stronger this veining is than the other one So this veining will 
be able to bear being manipulating manipulated without being uh, yes you can grab a leaf but the leaf from outside will not help you if you're making roses or flowers it's great for leaves but not for flowers okay let me show you where you put the all right so you put felt here and there are those um, rounds of felt that are normally put under the um, legs of furniture and you can use those you can put just in a circle around the the area where you twist the motor in and that will stop it from wobbling back and forth like that but uh, I can tell you that the atlas doesn't wobble that much but the um, the makings definitely wobbles quite a bit let me get this back on track and see where we are okay so let me go back oh thank you Lydia for yeah uh, per general request I actually have a, a section in the Af Amazon influencer store with the nail polishes that I'm using so <laughs> yeah um, and I think I am pretty much done. I've been up for about a quarter past an hour. So, okay, go away. I want this. So, if there is anything else. Oh, you sent the uh, makings? Oh, yeah. Uh, what I wanted. Hi, Marina. What I wanted to tell you, um, as I announced, I'm thinking of doing another giveaway because I'm nearing 13,000 subscribers. Yay. And for the giveaway, it's going to be a never need machine. So, yeah, be watch because I'm going to announce it fairly soon and I'm going to prepare already hopefully without any problem the like I did for the 10,000 it's going to be a tutorial and at the end there are going to be some questions and it's going to be probably for like I forgot how long was it the last time 24 hours or 48 hours uh, after the video is published um, you comment with the answers and there will be several answers and the first people who get all the answers right uh, the first person who gets all the answers right will get the the prize the giveaway so uh, remember if you have anything else to ask me you can either uh, message to the Kaliana page let me put here real quick the link so you can either send me a message here thank you Norma Jean yeah I went with something else Marina if you look at the hold on I'm going to post this again. I went with a completely different thing. For the sander, if you were not uh, aware of it, I'll post again the a link to the article on my website because there I also have links to where you can uh, 
get everything so let me shorten it with a bitly because otherwise YouTube doesn't let me okay so read this article Marina and you can see everything so what was I saying I was talking about the yeah the contest so like it was last time I'm not going to leave it forever it will be just for 48 hours and whoever gets the first uh, correct uh, answer will get the never need machine so uh, yeah and look forward I told you the first tutorial I'm going to post hopefully I'll be able to finish it by tomorrow will be with Rose Keynes uh, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to put both of them in one tutorial in one video or if I'm going to separate them it depends on how long they get and then um, I'm going to slowly start working on the um, Cernit Opaline and the female leather. So we'll see how that works. Okay. So again, sorry for today. Uh, next Sunday, I don't foresee any issue being able to work and we'll uh, do the um, uh, Scarabs necklace and we'll go from there and hopefully everything will be okay now i need to go put some more eye drops in my eye and probably rest a little bit so <laughs> remember yeah oh yeah i was saying how you can send me the i posted the link to the facebook page you can also go to the youtube channel here and ask uh, I posted uh, the link to this live uh, keep posting in the comments whatever questions you have don't worry if the comments don't show right away because for some reason and I'm unable to change that setting uh, for some reason all the comments in the community are uh, moderated so I have to go through them and tell them it's okay if you put it up there so yeah so I'll see you all next uh, uh, Sunday and thank you thank you so much for being here with me and for all the support because it's been a really really hard time for me <laughs> in the last couple months so uh, I'll see you all Sunday have a wonderful reminder of the Sunday. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, where's my... Oh. Sorry, it takes a little bit to stop because I went off. The <laughs> I went off the, the screen with the live.